Thank you so much. Okay, thank you for being patient with me. I'm so sorry, my I my computer decided to crash. So then I got another computer. Anyways, I'm so happy to be here. So happy to have you here with me. My name is Heather Flake. Today we're going to be talking all about communication in marriage. So if you have any questions or comments or anything that you want to add to today's discussion, which I highly encourage and welcome, go ahead and put it in the Q&A box. That's where we're going to be hanging out today. And, oop. okay, there we go. Yeah, so anything you have, just go ahead and throw it in there and I will take care of you. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm here on behalf of Life Coach University, and our whole goal here is to get life coaching to as many people as we possibly can. And the amazing thing about Life Coach University is we work on a pay it forward platform, meaning our classes and the things that we offer are completely free. And we just ask that as you participate in these classes, you pay it forward in the world in whatever way that you see fit. So maybe that's buying someone's meal at, you know, at the person in front of you in the drive through behind you, whatever. Maybe that's opening a door. Maybe that's writing a thank you note to someone that you care and appreciate in your life. You get to decide. But just be thinking about that as we go through the class today. How can I pay it forward? Okay, let me know at any point, you guys, if you cannot hear me. The, it looks really funny on my end, so I'm not sure. So just holler at me if this is not, if you can. Okay, so communication, right? Sometimes I think it just can be so difficult to talk and to hear and to respond. Like communication can encompass so many things. So we're just gonna kind of break this down a little bit. The way that it's gonna work today is I'm just going to teach and give you some insights, some tips for the first little bit. And then I wanna answer your questions and give you the help that you're looking for in being here today. And also the more that you participate and put in your opinions and your experiences, the better this class is for everyone. So don't be afraid to share. If you wanna be anonymous, you can be anonymous, but just know that this is a safe space and everything is welcome here and there's room for all of it. Okay, the first thing I want us to do is I want you to think about how you define communication. Like what does it mean to you, communication within your marriage? And I know you're, maybe that sounds kind of silly, but I think it's a really important thing to think about because so often we just label ourselves. Like I know before I got married, I was just like, oh yeah, I'm a really good communicator. And then I got married and I was like, oh no, <laughs> turns out communicating is really hard for me. And so I, and I think we just do this as human beings. We're always assigning labels to to ourselves and the way that we do things and the way that we show up and function in our lives. And I think especially in this area in communication, it's not necessarily helpful. So one of the things I wanna do today is just strip communication down to, to kind of a simpler form. So if you Google the definition of communication, it simply says imparting or exchanging information or news or the means of sending or receiving info. So I feel like when you think about it that way, it's like, oh, like, okay, yeah. It, like that really is just very simple. It's like, okay, I'm gonna say something to another person and they, they're gonna listen and they're gonna respond, vice versa. Like communicating is just sharing information, receiving information, that's all it is. But then our human brains are so good at dramifying communication. I don't know if that's a word. I made that up last night, but I like it. So we're going to roll with it. Okay. So I just want you to think of, okay, when it comes to communication in my marriage, how am I defining that? And then recognize that really all communication is, is sharing information, receiving information. And I, I think it's so funny. Um, Sorry, computer is scared. Um, 
sorry, and then be, be careful to not label yourself. You don't want to say I'm a good communicator. I'm a bad communicator. You just want to say I'm a communicator. Oh, and this is what I was thinking. So a lot of the times my clients will tell me they're just like, Heather, I am not a good communicator. Like I really struggle to communicate. And I'm like, that's so funny. I don't agree with you because we meet every single week. We have 45 minute sessions and not once have I, have you not communicated, right? So I think it's helpful to just like own the fact that you can totally communicate. You have the ability to communicate, okay? So step two, something that I want to invite you to do is to own the way you communicate. And this goes for your spouse as well. So something that is helpful is to recognize what your styles are when it comes to communication and what are your habits and what are your trends. This is not like scientific. I'm just saying, I want you to observe yourself. For example, in communication, especially like, I feel like I've made leaps and bounds of progress in this area. But a lot of the times I tend to just shut down when I feel like there's confrontation or maybe there's something that my spouse and I disagree on. I would just tend to completely go silent. And, and so I think that's really helpful for me to recognize like, oh, I just kind of have this habit or this trend that when I feel confrontation or when I feel like nervous or uncomfortable, I just kind of shut down and I don't physically speak words, but I'm still communicating. You guys, my body language, my silence is still a form of communication. So I think that's kind of interesting to under, to notice. So I just want you to think about yourself. What are your styles when it comes to communicate? Do you tend to share and to talk about and say all the things? Or do you tend to keep everything pretty much to yourself and you're pretty quiet and then you get to this point where you feel like a volcano and you just can't take it anymore and it all explodes? Um, how, how did you grow up? What trends? What did you see when you were growing up? I feel like in my family, we didn't really talk about things. You know, it was just kind of like, it's not like we put everything out on the table and have these discussions and express how we felt. And so I just think it's really helpful to look at this as a whole and understand where you are coming from, because that's going to help you help you make progress if your goal is to communicate more effectively or be more open, be more vulnerable, whatever your goal is. Okay, so now I, what I wanna show you is how our brain does this amazing thing of dramifying what's happening. Okay, so. Here in the purple, you guys, you're going to see what I'm calling facts. A fact is something that I also use with the word like circumstance. If you've been here before, I talk about circumstances. Circumstances are facts, right? So a fact is something that can be proven a lot. It's something that everyone has to agree upon. It's neutral. That means it's not positive. It's not negative. It just is. Okay. So I'm just going to go through some examples and show you how... A lot of the times in communication, messages are being shared with us from our spouse, right? We're talking about this in the context of marriage. So our spouse will say something and then I dramify it. My brain totally dramifies it. And I take it to this other place and I interpret it in a totally different way that, that a lot of the times my spouse didn't have that intention of. Let me just show you. So for example, my husband says to me, are you okay? That's, that's the fact here. He says these words. And then my brain grow, goes, oh my gosh, he's always nagging me. Why, is, why does he keep asking me? I'm fine. Like this is the drama. Do you do this? I do this all the time. But what I want you to see is if you can strip communication down to focus more on the facts and kind of keep keep minimum drama. We're never going to be able to take away all the drama, right? It's just what we do as humans. 
but I try to do this in my brain. I just try to sort facts from drama. I'm just like, oh yeah, this is just the part where I'm being super dramatic and I'm making things up. But here's the fact. My husband just said the words to me, are you okay? And then a lot of the times I make that mean all this other stuff, right? Okay. Spouse says like, let's say that we're sitting down together reviewing our budget for the month or whatever. And my spouse says, we spent $538 on groceries this month. That's a fact. He just said those words to me. It could be a fact that this is what we spent. That's a fact. And then I, me, I'm like, oh my gosh, he thinks I'm so irresponsible and that I'm just careless with our money. But hello, does he even know how expensive groceries are these days? Has he seen the inflation in the supermarket? And wow, like I, I do everything in this family, you know? So, so my brain just starts going to this crazy place and then I kind of shut down and I, I don't communicate in the way that I want to, okay? Here's another example. This is, this is so funny to me because this is an example from my life. My, my spouse will say, hey, did you exercise today? That's a fact. He's just asking a question. And my brain will go to some version of like, like, I feel like I'm attacked. I'm like, for real? Like, you're the one who needs to exercise. Why, why, do you, why are you even asking me? Like, I just, I make it something that it's totally not. So the fact is, he just asked me this question and it would be really simple. I could simply say, yes, and this is what I did. Or I could simply just say, no. Like, it's not a big deal. But within communication, I think communication is so complex because you as a human are very complex and you have all of these ideas or conceived notions or you think that he's thinking this way and I'm thinking this way. Like there's just so much that goes into it. So I'm just showing you this to encourage you to look for the facts. I know you can't see the end here and just skip the drama. Like, save the drama for your mama. Remember that? Like, just look for the facts. What are the facts here? And I think this is a really helpful tool, especially when you feel like you are in an argument or you're kind of having a hard time being on the same page. Strip it down to the facts. Okay, what are the facts here? And I just try to tell myself, I just believe, like, dude, my husband loves me. He has my best interest at heart. He's just a human. I highly doubt he's trying to hurt me. Yeah, you know, kind of walk through that way. When it comes to communication, stick to the facts. And you're not going to be able to all the time. You're not even going to be able to probably half of the time. Drama is going to get in there. Your thoughts, the way that you're perceiving it, they're totally going to play a part. And that's totally fine. Just if you can start to recognize it in yourself, like, wow. He said this thing and I interpreted it this way. That's fascinating. I wonder why he did that. Just be curious about it. That's going to give you a lot of traction. Okay, the next thing I want to invite you guys to do is to identify your problem area. And not, not that it's a problem. I, I could have worded this differently. But what I mean is I just want you to notice patterns in your communication. So if you feel like you always kind of clash when it comes to talking about finances or when it comes to parenting or the roles you do at home, or maybe it's your in-laws, whatever it is, you do wanna notice and you wanna pay attention to that area because, well, and especially, and you're here, so I'm assuming this is true. If you wanna make it better, if you wanna fortify and strengthen the way that you communicate in this difficult area for you, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention and know what the area is, okay? So for example, if it's like every time when you guys sit down to talk about budget and you start feeling attacked or scared or guilty, that's really helpful to know. You wanna know why, why am I feeling that way? So that's when we come down here and you can do what I call a thought download. You can do this with a pen, a pen and paper, a Google Doc. You can speak to um, like a recording app, whatever. But you just want to get all of the thoughts out of your brain when it comes to this area. So I just asked myself, okay, Heather, like, why do you get so fired up when it comes to talk about the budget with your husband? 
What's that about for you? And I just go and I let all of my thoughts out and I don't worry so much about what he's thinking. Like in this exercise, I'm just trying to get really clear on what it's about for me. Does that make sense? So I get all my thoughts out and I just keep asking myself, okay, what else? And then I just get to explore this. So you, I want you to think about yourself as like a scientist when you go through this, okay? Because the, you will be enticed to just judge yourself and to make it mean that you're bad and you're messed up and blah, blah, blah. None of that is going to be helpful for you. So you just want to explore like, okay, this is so fascinating that I'm thinking these things, that I'm feeling these feelings when, in, when we're talking about finances. Okay. And you want to do this with what I call C squared, the two C's. I promise this has nothing to do with math. I don't do math. It's compassion and curiosity. Okay. So when you're dealing with yourself and you're trying to figure out where you're coming from and what's going on for you, you want to be so compassionate with you and you want to be curious. Being curious with yourself means like asking those questions. Well, why do I do this? Or I wonder when this became a thing for me or, you know, how, how does this totally make sense that I behave in this way? You know, when you take in your socialization and how you were raised and the environment that you live in, it all makes sense. Okay. And last, practice. Okay. So we kind of recap this. You want to notice, and you guys, maybe there's more than one area and that's totally fine. Of course, there's more than one area. There's probably, I know there's several areas for me where I'm like, ooh, definitely not my favorite thing to have conversations about these things, right? But I, I want to pay attention to those areas because I want them to become stronger. I want to get better at it. I, I want something more. So the process of doing that is opening it up. It's paying attention. It's like a closet that is really cluttered and just dirty and has tons of stuff in it. And as long as you keep the door shut and you don't pay attention to it, nothing's going to change, right? But if you want that closet to be organized and to have electricity and to be nice and to be this great functional space for you, you're going to have to open the closet, right? And you're going to take all the things out and you're going to sort through it and decide what stays, what goes. You're going to figure out how to make this closet work for you. Same thing here. We don't want to, oh, we're like, oh, I just don't really, I really just don't want to open up that closet. I'm like, so we want to just keep suffering with that closet that's totally not serving us? And we're like, yeah. But really we don't, it's just causing us pain. So if we can just open up the door and take a look at why we're thinking that way, why we're feeling that way, explore it, be curious, be compassionate, then we get so much more traction. This is what I tell my clients all the time. They're always like, okay, just like tell me a new thought to think and, and how can I make this better? I'm like, slow your roll. You just have to become aware. You have to recognize what's happening, where you're at in order to go to a different place. Does that make sense? So on, on this next page here, I have the model. For those of you that are new with me here today, um, the C stands for circumstance. So the fact, and then we always have thoughts about our circumstances. Our thoughts create our feelings. Always based on the way we're feeling, we take action, meaning we do certain things, we don't do certain things, and then we create a result for ourselves. Okay. So it's super helpful to plug in specifics when it comes to a, your problem area or an area you feel like over and over and over again you're struggling with. So if there's anyone here in the Q&A that would like to look at a specific problem area that you have, we could go ahead and put it in here. Um, I put this question out to my Instagram followers and I got a couple of responses. I just asked my audience like, okay, when it comes to communication, what's one of your struggles? So we can do that. But while I'm, I'm giving an example, you can think too. If you have a specific example of something that you struggle with, we can plug it in here. Now, here's the thing. I don't have all of this information from my person. So I'm going to be making like a lot of, I'm just going to kind of deduct my own ideas of what I think. But one of the people said, I, 
so when it comes to, to a struggle that they have, when it comes to communicating, she was like, I just really am worried about upsetting my husband. And I'm worried that whatever it is that I do say is going to sound silly. Okay. So in, in the C line, the circumstance, we could just put, um, conversation with, with spouse. I'll just make it super simple. Okay. And then her thought is, I don't want to sound silly. That's the thought. So then here, I probably feel like worried. Because I'm, I am worried that I am going to sound silly. So then when I'm worried, what do I do? Um, I just like overthink, overthink it in my mind. Actually, avoid talking about it. It's a little worried and silly, and then it's like if we sound silly, if our husband thinks we're silly, that's gonna feel really bad for us. Like we just go down this whole thing, right? And then there's probably other things that we do or don't do, but the result of all of this is I don't communicate in the way that I want to. And I probably do look silly. Like we just proved this. We probably do look silly because we're just overthinking it. We're super stuck in our head. We don't actually talk to our, our partner, right? All of these other things happen. So the things that you think are always tied to what you actually create in your life. So if you have this thought of like, well, I don't want to sound silly and I've got to find the right words so I don't upset him. Sorry, I'm getting held of myself. So we'll just stay with this. So if I am thinking, I don't want to sound silly. And when I think that, it makes me feel worried. When I'm worried, I overthink it. I, and then ultimately just, I don't even talk about the thing. So the result of all of this is I don't have a conversation. And I just, I do, I, I kind of just am silly. Because I do want to talk to, to my spouse about this thing. So do you see how that happens? Now, it could be the same thing where this friend said, um, so the circumstance will keep the same. We want to have a conversation with our spouse. But our thought is, I've got to find the right words without upsetting him. To me, when I think that, that makes me feel a lot of pressure. When I feel pressure, I, I'm going to avoid my spouse or I'm going to like over practice. I'm going to turn this over in my brain so much that I make a way bigger deal out of it. And then the result is maybe I, I just kind of blow up and I end up saying things that I really didn't want to say, or maybe the opposite happens. I don't say anything at all. It, it would just depend on the person, right? And, and different things could happen. But do you see that, you guys? The things that you think are in charge of how you feel and then how you feel is in charge of what you actually do and what you actually do is in charge of what you create. So that's why I just want you to start to pay attention to your thoughts or your feelings. You can start with your feelings, right? When it comes to communication or when it comes to having a conversation with your spouse. And a lot of the times it's, it's a difficult conversation when we start to notice more of these feelings and you can just work backwards when you feel that way, what, what thoughts are connected to it, right? So on this next page, you're going to see some incredible artwork by my, myself. So please try to contain yourself. Told you. <laughs> JK, I am not an artist, my friends. Pretend this is a map, okay? So I think a helpful way to think about this is you want to notice where you are today when it comes to communicating. And you guys, obviously, I don't know that for you. Right, and there's no right way to be, there's no wrong way to be. You just want to know the way that you are when it comes to communicating. So just like we said at the beginning, maybe it's, okay, I shut down when there's something important or challenging that I feel like I need to bring to the table. Or I, I tend to say way too much and I wish that I would just filter myself a little better. Or 
Um, I feel like my spouse does all the talking and I can never get a word in and I'm feeling powerless. Whatever it is, you just want to recognize where you are on the map. Because think about your phone. When you plug in an address to your phone, if your location signal, service, whatever, if it's not turned on, that's the first thing your map says. It's like, hey, you got to enable the location so that we can figure out where you are so that we can send you the directions, right? It's the exact same thing here. You've got to first spend some time recognizing where you are today in the communication you have in your marriage. And then we also want to know like, what's our destination? So that could be really simple. Maybe the goal is when I start to feel a negative emotion or I feel like something difficult is happening, I say something. That's something that I've totally had to work on because I used to just not say anything at all. And I would be feeling so much negative emotion inside, but I would just keep pushing it down and I would just lie to my spouse, like, yeah, I'm fine. And I mean, he knew I wasn't fine, but I would refuse to speak the truth of what was happening for me or, or the way that I was perceiving things. And that just caused a disconnection, right? And I, I would be disappointed in myself. And then, so I, I felt disconnected from me and from my spouse. So maybe, maybe for me, like my goal was just, oh, when I'm feeling a certain way, like when there's a rift, when I'm not feeling like all is good and well, I just want to express that. That was, that was my main goal. I've totally gotten better at it. It's still challenging. I'm not perfect at it. It's like on Saturday, like we had a little miscommunication and I felt angry and it still took me like I did. I just shut down and I stopped talking and I withdrew and it took me a few minutes and finally was like, Hey, when you said this thing, like I felt this way and I know that that's not necessarily right, but like that's what was happening for me. Can we talk about it? Okay. So you just want to be clear. And when, when I say destination, maybe for right now, I would just invite you to pick one thing. What's one thing you want to improve about your communication? Don't make a list of a hundred things or even five things because then you're going to feel really overwhelmed and you're going to quit. So let's just pick one thing. Let's just pick one destination. Does that make sense? And honestly, the question is, what will I need to do to get there from where I am today? So in order to feel like I can share what I'm actually thinking and feeling, what would I, what would I have to do? And we almost like work backwards. So you can literally make a to-do list, right? So it's like, if where I am right now is I don't say anything, when I'm feeling the negative emotion or I'm feeling like there's a problem and where I want to be is in this land where when I feel a negative emotion come up, I say something. I don't ignore it and just let it be there until I get over it. Like I say something, right? So the first, so then I would just make a list. I asked myself like, okay, so what would I need to do in order to do that? Right? What, maybe one of those things is I need to be aware of my feelings. Maybe one of those steps is I would want to tell my spouse like, hey, I'm going to try this new thing, right? So you can just make a list and you just keep asking yourself like, okay, what else? And sometimes my clients say, well, Heather, but I don't know how. Hello, that's why I'm not doing it. I don't know how. And I say, listen, friend, the belief precedes the how. What if you just believed so firmly that you were going to get to this place? That when you felt a rift, and you wanted to talk about it, you talked about it. Like, can you just believe that that's possible for you? Because believing that is going to reveal the how. But also just brainstorming, just thinking, just taking an educated guess as to what you might need to do in order to get there is going to be so helpful. And then you just start practicing. You just go, right? So you write down the things you would need to do. And then over here, you want to list out, okay, what are the obstacles going to be? Because it's all great that we have this list, but then guess what's going to happen? You're not going to want to do any of those things on the list. Okay. So I list out my steps and then I'm going to say, okay, what's going to be the hurdle in the way? I'm going to say, oh yeah, like I'm just really used to not saying anything when I feel upset that's going to be an obstacle for me. Okay. So then you just go ahead and you turn that obstacle into a strategy. 
all right, so what's my strategy? And maybe it's, okay, I'm just gonna notice that negative emotion within myself. I'm gonna set a timer for five minutes. I'm gonna allow myself to feel the emotion and then at the end of five minutes, I'm gonna make a move. If my spouse isn't in the room, I'm gonna text him and say, hey, I need to talk to you. Or like, I'm gonna take some sort of action to, to ensure that I get over the hurdle. But this is something that's so exciting. If you plan for your obstacles, and then you turn them into strategies, do you know what happens? You get to the finish line. Like you achieve, you, you get to your destination, you achieve your goal. It's inevitable. I remember learning this process and was like, ah, this is so genius. I just used to think like, okay, well, if it's just meant to happen, I guess it'll just eventually happen. No, you create it, okay? And then that's the thing, and then you just go. And can I tell you what's going to happen? You're going to fail many times. But guess what? If you just keep getting up, if you are committed to getting to this destination, meaning nothing's going to stop you, you're not wound up about how long it's going to take. It can take 10 weeks. It can take six months. It can take two years. You don't really care about the timeline. You care about and if you think about it, if you think about the path and everything you're going to have to do in order to get here, you are going to be a better version of yourself, a stronger version, a more knowledgeable version of yourself. So we're going to love this path because it's making us better. Okay. So expect yourself to fail. Expect it to not be easy. Expect it to be challenging. But are you committed? There's a difference between wanting and being committed. Like I can want to wake up at 6 a.m., but am I committed to waking up at 6 a.m.? If I'm committed, that means no matter what, when the alarm goes off, my butt gets out of it. Whereas wanting is just like, oh yeah, it went off, but I don't, I don't want it anymore. I want sleep now and I stay in my bed, okay? So as you're going and as you're struggling, and that's the thing, the path looks kind of ugly. It's supposed to, but that ugly is actually really beautiful. So then you just want to evaluate. I learned this from a coach that I worked with and she would just say, okay, just like notice what you're doing well, like one thing that went well, one thing that didn't go well, and one thing you're going to do, try differently. Like I love that form of evaluation, right? So it's the exact same thing in this process of what you're working on when it comes to the communication. What am I doing well? Sorry, what did I do well? What didn't go well? What am I gonna do differently next time? And if you keep doing this process, do you know what happens? You get to where you want to be every time. It will work, okay? Okay, on this next page, you guys, I'm gonna give five tips to improving the way you communicate. Before I do that, are there any questions as to what we've covered so far? If there are, feel free to pop down into the Q&A box and put those in there for me. Or if you feel resistance to anything, you're like, eh, I'm not so sure about that. Like, go ahead and tell me where you are at with that, if you want to. Okay, when my partner and I fight or when I feel my partner criticize me, it hurts me too much. When I get hurt, I feel the rage and there is a strong feeling of needing to break something, okay? I would go into the kitchen and break plates and bowls. Then I would be sweeping up the broken pieces. After a while, I realized that I could put the bowls and dishes in a plastic bag first and then break it. I didn't have to sweep up afterwards. <laughs> I love you. You're smart. Okay, so let's talk about this. When you and your partner are fighting or you feel criticized, you say it hurts so much. Here's what we're going to do. Here's my marker. I dropped it. Hey, friend. 
So in the circumstance line, the fact, I want you to tell me, I mean, you don't have to tell me right now, but I want you to think about what is the fact, okay? It hurts me too much. That's not a fact. I'll show you where that goes in here. But first we would put like, had a conversation about bills or, or whatever it is, okay? Whatever starts this, you put here, okay? And then, um, yeah, here's the other thing. This would be a thought. I feel my partner criticizes me or my partner criticizes me. That's a thought. And then the feeling is hurt. And then when you're hurt, what do you do? You go into the kitchen and you break your dishes. Okay. And then that result, like, I mean, are you feeling better? Right. It's like you continue to feel hurt and you hurt your dishes. Right. Like it's really not, no, no one's winning here. Okay. So let's, it would be helpful. I'm going to invite you to think about like, what are the facts? What are things in, in this realm that everyone would agree on that I could prove in a court of law? What are the facts? And then I want to ask you why, and you, you just want to pay attention to your thoughts here. Okay. Is it possible that, that he's not criticizing you? Is it possible that you're criticizing yourself? And when you say it hurts me too much, like, like what's the emotion that you're feeling? Because I would put that as a thought. It hurts me too much. Okay. No, I don't feel better. I spend so much money on sets of plates. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Here we go. Great. So we would say even arguing you guys, I'm not going to put in the fact line because some people the way that you, my anonymous friend, the way that you and your husband, you and your partner talking about, about finances to someone, they might be like, oh, that was so, that was such a lovely conversation. Like we can't really prove arguing necessarily. So we're just going to say conversations about finances. Tell me one of the thoughts that you think when you and your husband are talking about finances. What's one of the, the thoughts that you always tend to think when this conversation about finances comes up? Okay, and then friend, I'll write this in there. Tell me how this thought he is too half half. I'm not sure what that means. Um, tell me when you think that, how that thought, okay, perfect. Okay. He, let's see. He is too half half. And also friend, just give me some clarification. What, what does that mean? He is too half half. What do you mean by that? Okay. When she thinks he is too half half, she feels unloved. So one thing we know that she does is she breaks her plate. And then before she had to clean up the mess, whoa. How fast? He's very 50. He pays, oh, okay. He's very 50%. He pays 50%. I pay 50%. Okay. So, I mean, I'm still not totally clear on that, but it doesn't necessarily matter. So just stick, stick with me. Tell me what else that you do when you're feeling unloved. We know that you break the plates and then you have a big mess to clean up. Tell me what else you do and tell me what don't you do. Okay, Here, here's another thought. She says, that was not the marriage that I thought I was marrying into. That, my friend, you would put right here. When you think this is not the marriage I thought I was marrying into, how does it make you feel? When you feel that feeling, what do you do? When you do that and you don't do that, what does it create for you? That's what you, how you would start to unravel this. I go through all the things I buy, I go through things. Okay, I highly doubt, I'm gonna make some assumptions here, but I highly doubt that you 
that you talk to him in a productive way or that you connect with him, right? Like you're feeling totally disconnected, you're breaking plates. And um, just like the result of all of this is, you know, you have a lot of broken dishes and now you got to go buy some more. But you, like, you're not feeling the love for yourself at all. And we could argue, I, I still, I'm not really sure what this means for you, but you know what it means for me, for you. How does that thought show up in your result line, right? When, when you act this way. And here's the thing. Yeah, so because she's him, I just can't talk to him. And, and you, you're not necessarily saying words, but you are, I mean, this could be complex, but you're communicating in this like very intense way of like smashing dishes, right? So this is, this is not what you're wanting, right? And this is all really, really painful for you, not to mention the money, the mess of the dishes and that part, right? So look at this friend, the conversation about finances is totally neutral. It's just a thing that exists. You and your spouse are sending messages to each other about money. That's it. All of this, you are in complete control. How do you want to think about talking to your spouse about finances. And just notice when you think he's too half and half, you feel unloved, then you break things, you blame him, you disconnect from him and yourself. And it's, there's a lot more than shattered. Right. You get to choose. That's what I invite you. You just explore this. And that's what I would tell you to do first. I want you to get out a pen and paper and just write down, okay, why is it so challenging for me when we talk about finances and get everything out. You can judge him, judge yourself, get it all out. Never be mean to yourself, right? You're just, you're just getting the information out. You ask yourself, okay, what else? And then you go back and you explore. You do C squared, you be compassionate, you be curious. And then you decide, you're like, all right, I see what this is creating. I see the result not really a fan. What else is true? Why, why am I choosing to think this thought that creates so much pain and so much drama for me? What could I choose to think instead? And that's the thing. Feeling unloved, friend, is not going to help you at all. So if you wanted to feel loved in this conversation, which P.S., that comes from you, not your husband, your husband can't force you to feel loved and your husband can't force you to feel unloved. You're feeling all this pain because of this thought he's too half and half, not because of the conversation about the finances. Isn't that amazing news? This conversation about finances is not responsible for the broken plates. It's this thought. So if we can get some traction on this thought, we can change the rest of this. If I tell myself that he is just being fair, then I feel better, but being fair does not feel loving. Okay. So there again, you can just, you can just literally run these all day long, keep the circumstance the same. And then in your thought, just try this out. Okay. If I think he's just being fair, how does that make you feel when you feel that way? What do you do when you do those things? What does it create? And you can keep running these until you get to a feeling and ask if you love, then I have to believe that people are spending down to take care of our family. Okay, so why, why don't we try that? This stays the exact same conversation about finances. My thought is, I believe my partner is trying to keep our spending down to take care of our family. But here's the key. Do you believe that thought? Right? You're telling me that that's what's going to make you feel loved. And do you hear me? The only thing that is going to make you love friend is what you choose. If your partner is trying to keep spending down to take care of your family, then you're probably not going to feel loved. 
So that's the question. What could I think that makes me feel love when it comes to talking about finances with my spouse? And maybe you want to switch this thought to like, um, that I'm, I'm doing everything I can to take care of our family, right? Like don't, maybe don't give spouse all of this power. Like you just get to decide how you're going to feel, how you're going to think. That's up to you. Is that making sense? Yeah, the ninth. So you just have to test this. You can even work it backwards. If the conversation is about finances and if I want to feel love or if I want to feel peace or if I want to feel hope, then you go here. Okay, what would I have to be thinking in order to feel that emotion? And then if I felt that emotion, how would I show up in this conversation? What would I do? What would I create? Really useful, thank you. No, you're so welcome. Thank you so much for sharing. It's so helpful to see an example like this and it helps everyone because I believe we all, we all struggle with that. Okay, friends. So I'm just gonna go through and give you these little tips. And you know what? Take it or leave it, try it on. This may work for you, it may not. That doesn't mean anything's wrong with you. This is not, this is not concrete. Right? These are just some tips that I'm giving you to try, maybe things you haven't considered before that I want you to invite to try on. If it works for you, hallelujah. If it doesn't, then let's try something else, okay? Okay, the first thing that I want you to do when it comes to your communication in your marriage, if you wanna up-level it, make it better, you've got to know how you currently think about the communication that is or is not happening. And as a result, how you're feeling, what you are doing, what you are not doing, and what you are creating. So the model that we just ran with our friend, you've got to know that. In the circumstance line, you put communication. And then maybe my thought is we don't do it well. Or maybe my thought is it's really hard. Or maybe my thought is we're so great at communicating with each other. Whatever it is, and then follow that out. When I think that, I feel this way. When I feel this way, I do this thing. I don't do this thing. And then I create this. Because that helps you to see what you are in control of. Just like our friend. It's not like husband was breaking the plates, right? Like she was breaking the plates because she was thinking, ah, he's too half and half and that makes me feel a lot. Had nothing to do with the conversation about finances. It's all about what we're choosing to think about conversation. Does that make sense? Okay, step number two, I want to invite you to remember. I want you to remember and to take into account with grace your styles, your habits, your trends, your backgrounds for yourself and for your spouse, right? If you've been with your spouse for more than a few days, you probably have a good idea of their rhythm and how they tend to communicate. And maybe you can just ask yourself, okay, you know what, knowing what I do about his family and knowing what I do about the way he was raised and the experience he's had totally makes sense that he communicates that way. And that does not have to be a problem for me. Oh yeah, knowing me, knowing the way I grew up and my experiences totally makes sense that I communicate this way. But that is not proof for what I can become. You never use your past to dictate who you're going to be. You just decide who you're going to be. Okay. So just, you always want to take this into account with a lot of grace. We are not robots. You're not a robot. Your spouse is not a robot. And that's a beautiful, amazing thing. We are complex. We are complicated. There is so much to us. And that's an amazing thing. Let's remember to take that all into account. We're not dealing with robots. We're dealing with very imperfect people who mess up and who have so much baggage, all of us, right? Okay, step three, this is something that can be helpful and you're gonna think this is so not romantic and cool, but try it out. If you know that there is something that you wanna to talk to your spouse about and maybe you're nervous or just like my friend said, you're worried about sounding silly or what's gonna happen, send an invite to your spouse. I do this. When I know that I need to talk to Devin about something and I'm feeling like nervous or unsure, 
I literally go onto my Google calendar and I just put in a little like chat time and then I send it off. And it has like this little feature on the calendar. You can say yes or no or whatever. But I do that to hold myself accountable because the more I'm with myself and in my brain, I will talk myself out of having the conversation. And that's the, that's the exact opposite of what I actually want, right? So take some time, invite your spouse or just, just schedule it. Like, hey, I need to grab 30 minutes of your time to talk about this. Like maybe it doesn't sound hot, but I think that's such a, like, that's just you. I think that's very empowering. I think that's you like being like, okay, that's you being committed to communicating is inviting and scheduling and making it happen. Even, especially when you know, it's probably not going to be very fun. And with that, it leads right into step four is to preface things. So when I know that I'm going into what we're going to call a difficult conversation, I just preface it and I just to try to kind of soften the blows. And I just say, listen, what I'm about to say is probably going to be hard to hear. It's hard for me to say, I'm, I'm feel nervous. I feel uncomfortable, but because I love you and because I love me, I'm going to say these things and it might come out clunky and bad. And please just know that I care about you so much. And that's why I'm saying these things. Okay. Like just give it a preface instead of going in with guns blazing or, and sometimes maybe your spouse is like, what? Like, where is this coming from? So I just try to give like a little like caution. It's like when you're at Disneyland and there's those, that like caution that's like, hey, like there's going to be really bright lights and loud sounds. So if you're not down, don't get on the ride, that type of thing. It's just like that. I'm just like, hey, this might be kind of a, kind of a hard conversation to have, but because I care about you so much, that's why I'm having it. And no matter what, like I'm here for you and we're going to figure this out. Okay. I've found so much peace in, in doing that. Lastly, this is something that's been hard for me to learn. And that I'm working on don't make your end goal a solution. Okay. Let's just make the goal communication. So sometimes I will have a conversation with my husband and we talk and we talk and we give our different opinions and our sides and our views. And then the conversation naturally like closes like that's kind of all I've got that's all he's got and we haven't solved we haven't solved the problem at hand and I tend to get so frustrated about that I'm like we need a solution what are we gonna do and my husband's always like no 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 we're communicating communicating is the solution we're talking about this Heather and that's what matters and I feel so passionate about that it's when you don't talk that you, that you disconnect and you separate and then some more problems present themselves. But you know what? If we are talking about it, then the solution eventually is going to present itself. And if I'm willing to be vulnerable and uncomfortable and to keep having this conversation, I know that it's going to work out, that a solution is going to present itself. We're going to find it and figure it out. Okay. So don't make a solution the end goal, because if your goal when you're talking is to figure the thing out or to get what you want, then you're not leaving any room for like humanness. What if the goal is just for you to say what you really think and what you feel in a loving way and for you to hear and to listen with love? That's the other thing. Know thyself, right? If you know that you are quick to anger or you have a, a temper or you get really upset around things, maybe just take time to like work through your feelings, feel your emotions, and then go into the conversation as your best self. One of my other um, followers told me this, she's, that she struggled with. She says, a rush of emotions come and I just shut down. And then my spouse wants me to explain what I'm feeling right then and there. And I feel like that's impossible. Okay, that's not a problem. So if you're feeling all this emotion, did you know you can just say, hey, you know what? Like literally, I just need to feel what I'm feeling right now. And when I'm ready, uh, I'll, I'll let you know what's going on for me. I just, I need to be alone right now. 
like advocate for yourself. You know yourself, you know, hopefully you're going to work through this. You're going to know your styles and your trends and your habits because you're aware of it. And then use that to your advantage. There's no right way to do this, but knowing who you are and knowing what is in your realm. And if you know, you're going to be way better the next morning. Like that's the thing there. There's that old phrase, like never go to bed angry. No, it's much better for me to go to bed angry. (laughs) And then the next morning after I've had some good sleep, I'm like, all right, I can chat about this. Because if I do it that night, I'm going to say things that I regret. And I'm not going to show up as my best self because I am tired. Okay. There's no right way to do it except for the way that you really do want to do it. And there's room for all of it. Okay. All right, my friends, we have two minutes. Do you have any other questions or anything else that I can clear up for you in these two minutes? If you do, you guys come to heatherflakecoaching.com or heatherflakecoaching on Instagram. Send me, you can send me a direct message. I would love to help you. I have a six month marriage merge coaching program where I work mostly with women to help them in their marriage and communication is a huge thing that we work on. So as as we close, I just want you to know that you have every reason to be hopeful. And whenever you are dealing with another human being, when you are in a marriage, it's just supposed to be hard. That's what I've come to learn. You like, you're mixing two different people and two different backgrounds and lives and trying to come and be unified. That's always going to be challenging. But if you are committed to just getting even 1% better at it, then you will, right? And there's a process and there's a way and you, you don't have to suffer and it doesn't have to be this miserable experience. There's so many tools and resources and help. So take advantage of that. But please, if you have any further questions or anything um, that I didn't answer for you, or if you need clarification on anything, anything, please send me a message. It was honestly such an honor to be here with you today. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening and participating. That means so much to me. Um, I encourage you to check out the other Pay It Forward talks that will be happening this month. There's an amazing lineup for March. And then just remember to pay it forward in some way today. After what you've experienced and learned here, think of a way in which you can pay it forward. I'll be doing the same. Thank you so much for coming. You guys take care and I'll see you next time.